Hey everyone, it's Solve with Soul and Heart Coaching and happy day after Thanksgiving. I hope that you are enjoying your day and that you are um, either relaxing at home or if you are out and about that you are enjoying your time out and about. So today I wanted to talk with you a little bit more about feeling loving and connected in your body and A couple of days ago, hey there, thanks for joining me. A couple of days ago, I sent out a link, a survey link, asking for anyone who wanted to, to let me know about your questions about feeling connected and loving in your body. And I was really overwhelmed by the responses. Thank you so much for those of you that responded to that survey and responded with some of your questions. And it was really helpful for me as well. And so today I wanted to make a little video to respond to some of those questions and to help you think through some of those questions. And so hopefully some of you will be watching this now or later who sent in questions. And I I wanted to share with you a little bit about how I approach some of those questions that you asked in, in one way or another. So thanks for being here with me. So some of these questions you'll notice I'm responding with thinking about both sort of the inner work that we do and the outer work that we do around thinking about feeling loving and connected in our bodies. Um, I wanted to start off with a couple of questions that people had sent me, and I'll just read these to you and then we'll talk about them. And I think that a lot of us can relate to these questions, so those of you who sent these questions, thank you, because I think they're ones that a lot of us can identify with. So a couple of them were, how can you learn to love yourself in the unconditional way that others love you? How can you quiet the inner critic? How do I let go of wanting to feel younger looking? And how do I stop obsessing about perceived flaws? So that's a set of questions from a variety of different people. And one of the ways that I like to address questions like this, I mean, obviously there are big questions and there's, there are questions that a lot of us deal with in our lives for a long time. And, and one of the ways that I want to offer to you today to deal with some of those questions is around the idea of feeling sufficient and feeling spirited. And I'm going to talk about those. Um, the idea here is that if you can tune into this feeling of sufficiency, the feeling of enoughness, This is a really good starting point. And then beyond that, feeling spirited. And you can interpret spirited however you'd like, um, whether that is for you in a spiritual context of feeling like you are bigger than or you are more than your body, but you're also a spirit, or whether it's also feeling spirited, right? The idea of like that, um, that feeling that we feel when we feel spirited is another way that you can think about this. So feeling sufficient and feeling spirited. Again, interpreting those how you want to. There are practices like self-compassion. It's a practice I really like. Self-acceptance through creating an attitude of, uh, or or through creating an environment, I guess is what I mean to say, of gratitude for oneself and being able to really tune into that. You know, for those of us in the U.S., um, we've just finished celebrating Thanksgiving, which often has a a lot of feelings of gratitude around it and also sometimes some feelings around our bodies. Um, And so what I want to offer to you is that feeling of gratitude is one that we can tune into for ourselves towards our bodies as well. Um, But one way that I like to start in terms of feeling sufficient is, first of all, a practice of tuning into our bodies and really listening to our bodies. So if you haven't done that, today I want to invite you into just a moment of quiet and of listening to your body, right? What is your body telling you today? What is she telling you that she needs? And sometimes all it takes is just a slow down and a moment to listen and see what she's telling you. So the other thing that we can do 
in addition to slowing down and listening, right? What comes up when you listen to your body is also to practice self-compassion. And the work of Dr. Kristen Neff is um, one of the the pieces of work that I call on when I'm thinking about self-compassion. She wrote a book called Self-Compassion. And one of the practices she goes through, I think this works specifically for people who, um, one of these questions, right, how am I um, needing to quiet my inner critic or deal with my, uh, stop obsessing about my perceived flaws. Uh, One of the ways that we can deal with this and feel sufficient is to just notice our thoughts, right? And to say something to ourselves, like, I can see right now that I'm focusing on and then whatever it is that you're focusing on, right? Whatever the, your perceived flaw you feel like is, I can see right now that I'm focusing on this or however you're criticizing yourself, right? And then just notice this is a moment of suffering. Like this is a moment of suffering for me. And then pull it out a little, zoom out a little bit and notice we all struggle, I'm not alone in this. There are other people who feel these ways. And then I would even invite you to put a hand on sort of your heart space and say to yourself, may I be kind to myself? May I be patient with myself? This is a really simple self-compassion practice that you can use to help you feel more sufficient, right? To help you feel enough and to give yourself kindness and compassion and generosity when you need to. So those are a few thoughts around those questions. Some other questions that came up, um, here's a few more. What steps can be taken to disconnect yourself from media-based messages and cultural narratives about what your body should be? How can I accept myself the way I am, but also try to improve my health and fitness, right? These are, these are some of those complex questions that we have, right? How do I reject a sort of narrative that society tells me about how I should look? And also, how do I seek to be the healthiest or, you know, seek to focus on my fitness and my body, right? Um, while accepting and loving myself, these are questions again I think a lot of us can relate to one of the ways that I like to connect in when I'm thinking or experiencing these questions or supporting someone who is is exploring a feeling strong internally and in my body right so feeling strong in my sense of how I want to view myself and the world and also in in my body right and so this idea of tuning into feeling strong And so you can do this in a variety of ways through exploring self-trust, through being present to the feelings and not numbing them. Um, Sometimes feeling strong, it's easier to feel stronger when we're in community with others. And so being around other people who are seeking to be positive about their bodies and who are seeking to both be healthy and well, but also be loving and accepting. And sometimes it's around critical thinking, right? Being a critical thinker and thinking, "Mm, how do I feel about this actually? There are these media messages, but how do I actually think about those? How do I tune into those media messages? Um, All of these things and then movement, right? Finding some way of moving in our bodies can also help us to tune into that courage and that strength to get beyond both media messaging and also keep working towards our own fitness goals, our own health goals, um, whatever those may be. And so uh, one thing that I love to do when I'm noticing this is just to come up with some little physical challenge for myself and um, when I want to feel stronger. And, And so sometimes this is just if I recognize this stopping and whatever's safe for you, right? Do whatever is safe for you. But maybe for me, sometimes it's stopping and being like, you know what? I have 
two minutes, I'm going to do some lunges right now because lunges make me feel strong. Like when I do a few of these, this makes me feel strong. Or maybe it is some other sort of, you know, physical challenge for you that both helps you move your body and feel hopefully good in your body and feel like you're gaining strength. Um, that's safe for you, but also helps you get out of that headspace of overthinking all of the other stuff and just really getting into your body, right, in these moments. So see what's safe and healthy for you. And sometimes just a boost of movement um, can help us feel strength in and with our bodies and help you to feel stronger, um, even when you're hearing all sorts of messages about what you should be, for example. So another set of questions, and you'll see in some ways these are interconnected, but they're, they're slightly different in, in what they say. The, these questions came up. Um, how can I connect with my body more consistently and deeply? How can I feel more comfortable in my own skin? How do I ground myself in the present and stay grateful and appreciative? Those are great questions. And through those questions, I love thinking about the experience of feeling sensual, tuning into our senses. So how do we enjoy and nourish our bodies through self-care, through food, through pleasure and comfort, and through exploring things like taste? These things can help us to open up and love and connect in with our bodies and feel more comfortable, right? So tuning into your senses and feeling sensual. And one of the ways that, that I, is simple that I could offer you today to feel more sensual is, in this case, I'm going to think about savoring, right? The process of Again, you'll notice a lot of my suggestions have to do with slowing down, but how do you savor the flavor? If you're tasting something, how do you savor and slow down and just really fully experience whatever it is that you might be eating or smelling, right? Sometimes savoring, oh, I just got some really good um, pumpkin pie spice mix for some of the, the cooking that I was doing and baking yesterday. And I love just smelling and savoring that pumpkin pie spice. Like I don't even need to eat anything in this moment, just savoring that smell. Oof, it's good, right? Um, so savoring also moments, right? If you have a moment where you think, wow, this is an amazing moment right now. Maybe it's even in your body savoring that moment for yourself. So those are some things I could offer there. Another set of questions was around feeling sexy and attractive. In um, the, the question was, how do I feel sexy and attractive in my body no matter what? Um, I had a couple of people who were talking about being in relationship for a long time and feeling still sexy and attractive to themselves and also to their partner. Um, And then how do I take care of my skin? Um, How do I do my makeup and dress in ways that make me feel sexy? That was another set of questions that came up. And so I think this is a great time to tune into feeling sexy, right? If this is a question for you, thinking about how you embody your own sexiness, all right? How do you feel these things on your own terms in harmony with yourself? And this involves often making peace with our bodies and tuning into our own, I heard this term once, personal magic. And it's kind of silly, but I really like it. Like, how do you tune into your own personal magic um, and tune into who you are, the essence of who you are and embody that and even adorn yourself, um, add it to yourself in ways that make you feel beautiful, right? So this, again, doesn't have to be what anybody else tells you about these things. And I know this can be difficult, but to what makes you feel sexy, right? And I think if you're honest with yourself, the, what I would offer you today around this is that I bet you do have something. This is just a really simple thing, but look at what you have, um, you know, even in your closet, right? In your closet or around you, what do you have with you, um, already 
say in your wardrobe that when you wear this thing or when you, you know, put on these earrings, maybe it's an accessory or whatever it is that when you wear this, you feel really sexy. Like you feel good. And it doesn't mean that anybody else has even told you, I mean, who cares what anybody else thinks? This is about you and how you feel. Like when you put this on, you feel good. And that is what I want you to think about as you are thinking about how do I feel sexy, right? How do I adorn or like put on some clothing or some earrings or whatever it may be? It doesn't mean you need to buy new things, but just see what you have and see what makes you feel sexy, right? And what you can actually add to yourself. And don't overthink this, but just feel into it, right? Feel into what's going to make me feel sexy. And, you know, if you can go put it on today, right? Go add that thing into whatever you're wearing or plan to wear it tomorrow, right? Um, Or put it on tomorrow or soon uh, to help you feel sexier. Obviously, there's a lot more to say about all of these things, but I'm just giving you a little thing. And then the final um, piece or set of questions um, that came up uh, a few times, and I just sort of tried to put these together in ways that made sense for me because these are from different people is how do I deal with family members and their pushy ideals? How do I detach from others notion of body beauty? How do I get past society standards and come up with my own standards of loving connectivity with self? Oh, these questions are good. Oh, so many of these feel very familiar to me and to a lot of the clients that I work with. So I I hear you in these. And so the final response today that I wanted to think about with you was around feeling sovereign in your body. So one of my teachers and coaches, Nisha Moodley, talks about the idea of feeling sovereign or sovereignty being the union between freedom and power within the union between freedom and power within. And so this would be an exploration that I would also encourage for anyone who's feeling some of those questions I just mentioned, feeling sovereign in your body. So through that, this is again, just the practice of releasing others' ideals, releasing others' ideals even further, and often building community with other like-minded people who will support you in feeling connected to yourself and feeling healthy and feeling well and feeling all of these things. Um, I also really love the idea of creating spaces that help you feel connected. So again, this could be around people or how you create the space around you to help you feel connected to yourself and what's important to you. Um, So being able to create spaces, be in community and release others' ideals so that we can feel free and powerful with ourselves and in that spirit of community. So if you are wanting to practice feeling sovereign today, feeling freedom in and with your body in the union in and with your body in this case, I want you to take a moment and the one thing that I'd like to offer you today is try a little bit of mirror work. Now, mirror work can be super intense, um, but what I would like to invite you to do today is to find a mirror and look into your own eyes and say, I am powerful and I am free. I am powerful and I am free. So doing this kind of mirror work, just something simple like that can be the beginning of developing a more sovereign perspective when it comes to your body. And I'd love if you try any of these things today to hear how they went for you or what you experienced. So if you've stayed with me this long, awesome. Or if you're popping back in later, thank you so much for being here with me. I'm really excited to share these ideas with you um, and I am loving this topic of body love and connection. And I would say that the the kind of teaching that I'm doing is specific to big hearted, smart, soulful women in this case who are, or anyone who identifies as a woman who want to feel more connected, more cozy, more loving, kinder, courageous, freer in their bodies and in community with others around their bodies. Um, 
<clears throat> so this is usually for women who have done inner work already around loving their bodies and want to keep delving into this work deeper and deeper because it is sort of this process of working on these things and then coming back to them and seeing where am I at now, right? How am I doing and how do I want to feel more loving and more connected with my body? So I've been coaching women around this now for years and teaching women around about some of these principles and lately I have gotten more and more requests for this. And so I decided with this positive feedback that I wanted to create a deeper dive training for um, women that want to connect and feel more loving in their bodies. And so what I am just going to share with you today is about an opportunity to work uh, on body love and connection through an online coaching program um, where we're going to dive deep into these topics that I've mentioned already. So um, what I am creating is going to have five trainings and those trainings are going to focus in on those topics that I mentioned to you. So we're going to look at feeling sufficient and spirited. I'm feeling strong, sensual, sexy, and sovereign in our bodies. And I decided to call this training Body Hige. And you, if you've been following me lately, you see I'm uh, creating some uh, some programs with Scandinavian names. In this case, Body Hige, or the word Hige, is a um, Danish or Nordish, Nordic, Danish or Nordic concept uh, that refers to feeling cozy, feeling well being, feeling connected. And in community, I mean, it's this really beautiful term. Um, if you haven't heard it before, go look it up. There's so much um, goodness in the idea of Higa. And so that's what I wanted to call this overall framework that I'm going to be sharing more and more through this program I'm offering. And I, I wanted to do this specifically around the holiday season and the new year um, in relation to how we feel in our bodies. Because I don't know about you, but you're probably getting messages, I'm getting them already, of like how I should lose weight for the new year, uh, how to be healthier. I mean, I'm cool with being healthier, but like all of these messages already are coming at me and I bet they're coming at you too about how to um, like be the hottest I can in 2018. And um, uh, yeah, I don't know. I feel like we all need support around these things. Um because I want to look beyond this, right? I want to get beyond this space to think about how do we feel connected? How do we feel loving? How do we feel cozy and connected in our bodies? And of course, try to, well, not try, but seek to be our healthiest, seek to be our most well, seek to um, take care of ourselves, right? In the spirit of all of that, but not in a way that's about not being good enough or like having to be this other ideal that someone has laid out for us instead of what it is that we want for ourselves, right? And so that's why I want to create the space and why I want to lead you through a, a process um, that will support you is my intention around this season. So um, this program, Body Higa, will be out really soon. There's going to be a limited number of spots because I really want this to be uh, a journey where I can support the the women that choose to join me in this. Um, and, and so I, I will have a limited number of spots for the program. Uh, I'll be sharing more about it really soon. Basically, um, it's going to involve online trainings and coaching calls and um, some really special bonus guest teachers and other fun bonuses to to add to that. So I've been having a really great time putting this together for those of you that might be interested. And I wanted to give you a little bit of a, a preview of what we might be covering in, in some of the topics and things we were I discussed today. So You'll see more about this soon. If you know that you're interested already, definitely type me or say hi in the comments and let me know to send you more information. And I will send you more when this um, when I have opened registration for this program. Uh, so also please share this with any friends or family you think might benefit from this topic and this exploration together. And I hope that this serves you on this day um, after Thanksgiving, at least in the U.S., of, um, you know, 
some of us already starting to think about the holidays and some of the things that come up for us when we when we think about this season. So I am sending you good thoughts and I'm sending you lots of loving, warm, kind thoughts as you connect in with your bodies today and every day. And if you're interested in learning more, you can, of course, message me privately or say me here in the comments and let me know and I'll make sure to send you information as I open up registration for this program. And also, I'd love to hear any of your other thoughts. If there's anything else that comes up for you as you've watched this that you'd like to respond to or share with me, I'd love to hear your thoughts. So thanks so much for being here with me and uh, I'll see you on Facebook and in on the interwebs. <laughs> All right. See you later. Bye.